Hello and welcome to Battle Report number 5 for the channel. Uh, this battle report is another 2500 point battle which will feature Beastmen versus Lizardmen. The makeup for this is pretty similar to my last uh, battle reports. Uh, I misspelled Beast Lord, but basically it's a, a stubborn Beast Lord armor destiny, uh, Doom Bowl with the 1 up re rollable armor save. Uh, always strikes first, a flying death grape bray, bray shaman, uh, herdstone, two herdstone brays, a war gore with beast banner, uh, 48 gore, extra hand weapons, full command, two gore chariots, three by five ungar raiders, two by five harpies, and the minotaurs, six uh, standard musician, who I have uh, uh, very well named the point leaders, because that's, that's, that's their job. Uh, I didn't get his list entirely, but they, it's pretty much made up of a uh, Imperial Slan, a Lore Master to High Magic. He had the three channel dice um, channeling thing. I'm, I'm not that familiar with Lizardmen. Uh, his car was made up of Skink units. He had two Bastilodons and three Stegodons. Um, the only character he had. Oh, he also had a uh, old old blood on a Carnosaur. You'll see. Um, these are just a couple pictures of the terrain that I took for some reason. My spells are, as you see here, uh, both my level 1s are on Shadow, and so they didn't roll anything useful, so they just got Miasma. Move on to Deployment. Uh, skinks, 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 Skinks. Um, the Carnosaur is proxying a Stegodon for this event, and the Riderless um, Saurus, or... Uh, what is it? Cavalry thing is the uh, old blood. Okay, and Stegodon, Slan, Basilodon, Basilodon, Skink, 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 and Skinks. Move on to my left side. I have Harpies in the Woods, Ungor Raiders, Herdstone, Mages, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, my Gore Block, more Raiders. Uh, my level 4 death there is kind of behind the tree. Uh, my Minotaurs with Doom Bowl installed. Chariot, Harpies, Ungors, Chariot. So turn one goes to the Lizardman, and he moves up as such on the left side, and he moves up as such on my right side. Um, turn one was pretty uh, not inconsequential. Uh, he didn't have anything to really shoot at. Um, his bows on top of those Stegodons are hitting on a six at this point, so... They're not, they're not doing anything, uh, and magic was 8 to 7, and I dispelled and got rid of everything he was going to do. So, he did get my dispel scroll out to stop the soul quench, but uh, otherwise everything else was stopped. So, uh, my bottom of turn 1, my movement, I move up my Ungor Raiders, so they're short range, but still get stand and shoot. Uh, both of my chariots move up a little bit. On the other side, my blocks move up. Uh, my Minotaurs come up, um, keeping his Stegodons with a healthy charge range. Um, my Gores, everybody else just basically moves up. The Harpies just walk a little bit in the woods. So, um, <laughs> Magic was... I didn't write this down. Alright, well, Magic was pretty pretty heavily on my side with the Herdstone and everything. But, uh, we start out with a miscast on Doom of Darkness. So that was sweet. Uh, we cast it on one of the Stegodons. Or I cast it on those Stegodons. I got magical feedback, so every wizard took a wound, which was great, because I can't make a word save, but super duper. And then I went to cast Spirit Leech, um, getting it off, and getting it off on this Stegodon. Now, I, d I did realize afterwards, and reading the FAQ, I'm pretty sure Doom of Darkness doesn't count for Spirit Leech. Um, yeah, I really wish they didn't use the word unmodified leadership, but then... Let it, let it be modified by inspiring presence. Anyway, it doesn't end up being consequential because he takes two wounds from this and he doesn't take any more wounds the rest of the game. So, um, in shooting, uh, I took this for the funny because one of my Ungor Raiders picked off a Skink Skirmisher. Good work, guys. So, uh, we move into turn two. Lizardmen come chugging on up with all their Skinks. Uh, moving up, um, not going to charge me, just going to get in the way. And the same over here. So there are skinks in front of my minotaurs, there are skinks in front of my gores. 
Um, and then some skinks came up between my ungors and my gores there. Uh, the bastilodons are just uh, chasing behind the uh, slant. And essentially, they he's just kind of keeping his monsters around his land, which, you know, works out pretty good for him. So, oh, I, I should apologize. I didn't dispel scroll something before. I this He casts Arcane on Forging this time, and I do dispel scroll it. Um, oh, yeah, magic was, was 6 to 5. Uh, drain magic is cast um, to take off Tomb of Darkness. I was like, okay. And, and then that was that. So, shooting, he kills an Ungor, puts two wounds on the Minotaur, puts three wounds on my Chariot, kills six Gore, which is kind of surprising. Um, I guess double tapping with poisons so will do that, and kills one Ungor. So, that's it. That's the end of top of turn two. So, we go to bottom of turn two. We declare some charges. The Ungor declare a charge into those... Uh, Skinks there. Uh, my chariot declares a charge into those skinks. This chariot declares a charge into these skinks. Minotaurs declare a charge into these skinks. Gores declare a charge into these skinks. And harpies declare a charge into these skinks. <clears throat> so, uh, these guys make it. This is on the left side. They both make it. He makes it. They make it. They make it. And they make it. So everyone made their charges, so that's pretty sweet. Pulsary moves, uh, I fly my Great Ray Shaman up here. Um, this is a fantastic uh, purple stunning position, uh, if I can get it off. Um, I move my Ungors like this on the left up. Uh, I suspect my Minotaurs are going to kill these guys and overrun some, so I would rather not take a flank charge in my Minotaurs if they overrun any significant amount. Uh, this mage just moves up into the woods. So <clears throat> we start with uh, throwing miasma. Or, sorry, magic Magic is 12 to 7. We throw out a miasma onto his slan. So his slan is something like initiative 2. And with those two bastilodons by it, he was initiative 4. So if I want to hawk a purple sun through him, I said, well, okay, I'm going to miasma your slan's initiative. And he sat there for a while. And he said, all right, fine, I have to let you do that. Because I want to save my dice for uh, Dispelling Purple Sun. Because he doesn't have a scroll. And so it goes off, and his slant is now initiative 1. And he has no lookout, sir. So, super sweet. Um, since I have so many spell dice, I decided to throw a Fate of Buda. Um, I don't have a lot of good targets, because his slant has a 4 aboard and 2 MR2. So, I mean, I could Fate... I guess I could Fate his slant, but... He's got a 2 up ward against anything, so, eh. So I faded the, uh, the, uh, Stegodon here, and it didn't do anything. So, uh, we move on, a Hawk of Purple Sun, and it doesn't go off. Um, I went for the big one. Um, not even sure. Yeah, I guess I would have got a little one off. But he had seven dice to throw at it, so he would have, he would have stopped this, no problem. But, so I failed to cast Purple Sun, so that sucks. Uh, in combat, I don't clean up. The skinks kill all my ungors on the left side, and my chariot doesn't quite clean them up, but, he, you know, it's, it's okay, and he sticks. Um, this chariot cleans up all of his skinks and runs into his old blood. The minotaurs, of course, clean up their skinks and just move over die six, I don't know, a couple inches, probably. These guys clean up their skinks and reform, and the beauty of this, these harpies clean up their skinks. And both of his skink units on the right edge of the table here flee, or panic, and flee. Well, no, no, right. The front one panics, the back one don't, and then the front one runs through the back one, and then they panic. So I was like, that's, that's pretty sweet. That, that cleans up a lot of skinks. That was a hell of a good job for those harpies. <clears throat> so, move on to turn three. <clears throat> uh, he has no charges to declare, so he rallies one unit of skinks, on this side, and the other unit keeps running. Uh, on this side, he just moves some skinks around so that my overrun won't run into them, which is fine, and he can shoot me if I kill these guys. Uh, he marches his Stegodon back and around. Um, he marches his Slan as such, just to get out of uh, line of sight of everything, I guess. 
do, do, do. and oh, uh, the Bastilla, yeah, the Bastilladons moved back, just so I can't charge it. So, um, we start the magic phase, it's 10 to 5 in his saver, so he starts with an Arcane Unforging on my uh, level 4, which sucks, um, but since he has so much dice and he's already got my scroll out, I know he has Fiery Convocation um, in there, so... I let this go, um, I think I let this go, and he gets, he does get my ward, he does get my talisman of preservation. He can't wound me with it because I don't have any armor, but that still sucks. So, okay, and then he goes to cast Soul Quench on one die, I say, uh, he gets it off. And again, I shouldn't have done it, but I let it. I let it go, uh, hoping to stop fiery convocation. I don't. I don't know. I shouldn't have done that. Fiery convocation isn't that. It's not that big of a deal. I don't need my four that badly for this. Um, I needed him. I needed my level four. I should never have let this done. But he kills him. Okay, fine. Then on his last few dice, he goes to cast fiery convocation, and he irresistibly is it anyway. So all for nothing. A big bunch of gore fall over, and that ends uh, his turn three. Boo. Okay, so we go into my turn three. Um, oh, no, this is combat. I'm sorry. This is still his turn three. Uh, combat, I break those skinks, and I don't catch him. His old blood kills my chariot, no problem. And that's it. So we move into my turn three. My harpies declare a charge against these here skinks. My Minotaur declares a charge against his Carnosaur proxy against the Stegodon. My Gore declare a charge against his Basilodon. And my Harpies uh, declare a charge against those last skinks that were way up there, and they run off the board. Um, I just didn't get a charge of the dice, so they just have a failed charge. Uh, these Harpies get in. My Minotaurs do not make it. And my Gore do not make it. Uh, so compulsory, I just kind of move around a little bit. Um, I move those gore or ungore raiders you see up there, just so his stegadon can't charge into my uh, minotaurs. Um, I probably wasn't as worried as I should have been at those stegadons charging my minotaurs, but I, I did do a little bit. Um, so then this is the other side on the right. We're just hanging out, uh, showing here. I, I go to dispel fiery convocation. Um, magic, magic was, uh, 11 to 7, and so I throw 7 dice at Fiery Convocation, and I barely get it. I just meet the casting value, because I only have a level 1 at this point, or well, 2 level 1s, and I just barely get it, so, whew, I was lucky, but, ugh, I almost threw 6 at it, and I would have been really, really mad. Uh, the rest of my magic was easily dispelled. Uh, we go into shooting, and I my Ungors actually put a wound on Stegodon, which is pretty funny. We go into combat. Uh, these Harpies and these Ginks. Uh, I win by one, but I think he holds, so nothing special. Uh, turn four. Turn four, he charges um, Stegodons and his Old Blood. He tries to charge both Stegodons and the Old Blood you can see here in, and just the Old Blood and the one Stegodon make it. So, that's okay. Um, this, the Stegodon up here, charges my Ungors, which surprisingly passed their terror test. And in compulsory movement, he just moves his Skinks um, around over here. Yep. And just Shimon and just land and his Bastilladon around. So, uh, this is just a overview, it looks like. Oh! Oh, as it's just showing the skinks moving up for that chariot up on the top there. They can get him. Sorry for the blurry pictures. It was a little dark in there. So, shooting, of course, they kill the chariot. No problem. Over here, they pick off uh, the Encore, but they pass their leadership. This combat, we push. So, this... Something... Oh, oh, showing magic. Yes. Uh, magic was 12 to 6. He got off a uh, Hand of Glory on his Stegodon uh, for the weapon skill, I believe. So he's weapon skill 4 against my weapon skill 4. So, okay. I mean, that makes sense. Um, he was hoping to get it off bigger, but what are you going to do? Um, in combat, of course, Stegodon eats 
these Angor Raiders, that's that's fine. Um, I'm going to this combat, and he challenges with his old blood, and I happily accept with my Doom Bowl. Um, this is a fight we've gotten into before, and it's not pretty, but uh, his his uh, old blood has a kit where he has a one up rerollable armor save and a four up ward. And he has a great weapon. So, it's pretty rough. Um, especially being that my Doom Bowl is only strength 6. But, yeah, it's okay. If, anyone, if anyone's on the board who could deal with this guy, it's him. So, uh, we go in, uh, impact hits, just murder a bunch of Minotaurs. Um, I, I didn't know that those sharpened horns did D3 or whatever he has on that, to make it do D3 wounds. That is just awful on my Minotaurs. So, uh, lesson learned. Uh, <laughs> don't put them anywhere near Stegodon. Um, I'm still going to be steadfast. So this is this is the result of the end of the combat. So, I do two, in the challenge, we each do two wounds to each other. Um, that's fine. Um... The Stegodon, I don't think the Riders actually do anything, and I'm not sure that the Steg really does much. Uh, I do do four wounds back to the Stegodon, but uh, I do lose combat. Um, with all the impact hits from the Stegodon, uh, I lose combat by you know, four or five or something. But I am steadfast, and I stick on my leadership eight. So it sucks to lose my frenzy, but at least we didn't run away. Although I'm starting to wonder if it might have been a better run than make it, but anyway... So, ooh, um, we go into my turn. Uh, yeah, bottom of turn four. So, it uh, looks like we jumped straight into magic for some reason. Probably didn't know it wasn't a lot of movement. Uh, magic was eight to four. I got off super miasma um, on this Stegodon. I was hoping to keep him from charging in. So, I lowered all of his stats by three. Uh, looks like we go straight to combat. Sorry, the uh, pictures are getting a little sparse at the end of the night. Um... These two guys just keep hanging out. Sorry for the blurry picture on this. Um, I'm pretty sure what happens is my Minotaurs don't do any wounds. Um, in the challenge, we don't do any wounds to each other, and he doesn't do any wounds to me. So I have... He has a flank... But I have a rank and a banner. Yes. I, I, I end up winning this by like one or two. Or one. Yeah. Rank and a banner. So I win this by one and he sticks. So at least I get my frenzy back. But nothing big. I was kind of hoping somebody would run away. But cold-blooded. Leadership 10. You know. So uh, going to turn five. Um, I don't have a lot of movement stuff, sorry. Um, I had at some point in time uh, bust these uh, gores up and tried to get them over towards the Minotaur combat to bail them out. Uh, we'll find out how that works. Uh, spoilers, not well. Uh, so this this is him doing some magic shenanigans on his turn. Turn 5, he gets uh, 4 dice to my 2 dice. So... He actually gets both of his uh, solar beams off. So this is one solar beam going off. Oh, he just got one off. Okay. Uh, these are all out of order. Sorry. I don't know what that is. Okay, Harpy's died. That's fine. Um, this must still be his turn. So he did shoot um, this guy with something. Eh. Okay. Uh, the Harpies finally lose combat to those kinks, <clears throat> and we go into the combat. Um, this is, yeah, this is still his turn, his turn five. So, both of his Stegodons make the charge in to the Minotaurs, and that's just, that's just game over for them. Um, two dice six plus two, essentially, in fact, it's, ugh. Um, so, yeah. The only, the only good thing about that all was, though, that uh, I still had three models, so all of those hits went on went on to the Minotaurs, and none of them hit the Doom Bowl. Um, I think we played that right, because I, 
all of the shooting was allocated on on the unit because there were still three rank and file models because I don't have a champion. So I think we did that right. But anyway, so those guys all die, of course. Um, in his oh, in his magic phase, you can see his his old blood only has one wound on him now. So he must have got apotheosis off, which sucks. So um, yep. So I lose combat uh, a lot. Um, he did a couple more wounds to my Doom Bolt too, so I'm down to one. I, I was I'm counting down and he's counting up, so I know this is sorry, this is confusing. But um, this dice is just showing I lost combat. I was on Snake Eyes and I almost got it, but I didn't. So Doom Bolt runs away. He gets away. Ends up right there, which is fine. Um, it's like, well, it's my turn. Okay, maybe he turns around. Maybe he doesn't. We'll find out. So uh, just another another picture of that. Do, 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 do. Yep. And yep. Alright, so my turn. Um some standard movements. Um turn five my turn five. Um looks like those raiders moved a little bit. Uh not a lot left in the board. Um so I should go back to this one. My Doom Bowl doesn't rally. He keeps running. I don't have a picture of that. Um, it's actually fine that he kept running because it keeps him out of the way. Uh, down at the bottom, my shaman charged those skinks that had just killed the other shaman. Because um, those either stand there and get shot at till he dies, or pop in here and maybe, maybe break the unit, run him down. Or, seemed like a good idea. Uh, oh, in the middle, yeah, my my uh, gore had attempted to charge his slan. It was something like a ten or eleven I needed, and if, you know I didn't get it, but. He couldn't run away, so it would have been pretty sweet, but, you know. Uh, my magic phase is 9 to 4, so we throw off a super miasma on his old blood just to get his movement down. I honestly was just hoping that if he doesn't, if he does try to charge my Doom Bowl, at least it'll be a little hard to catch him. And down at the bottom, my level 1 Shaman um, doesn't do any wounds to the Skinks. But skinks don't do any wounds to him, so I have a charge and a flank, and they break, and I run them down. So, cool. So, uh, turn six. So, okay, there's there's my Doom Bull running away. So, there there he is. Okay. So, um, turn six. This is what it looks like at the beginning. Um, oh, it's just him moving. He did move those skinks to go face the Doom Bull, just in case. I told him to afterwards. So, it's like, he's like, well, I'm not going to hurt him. And I'm like, you know what? You might as well. Uh, him just moving the Stegodons around so he can laser beam some bros. And then we go into magic. It's 7 to 4. Not a lot I can do. My level 1. Um, he does an arcane unforging on my Doom Bowl. I throw my dice at it. Nothing I can do. Goes off. Um, doesn't. We don't even bother to see what it unforges because it does the wound that it needs to do. So... Too bad. Yeah, and there's the skinks all looking at him just in case. This Bastilodon lasers off these guys. Um, I think this guy was actually... Yeah, I think he was lasered off too. I just couldn't stop anything. I was really tried to stop that Arcane and Forging, but... And here's the end of the game. Um, oh, no, 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 we're not. We're not at the end of the game. Sorry. So that's just a picture of that end of that turn. Okay, there's everybody. All right, there you go. Uh, and then in my turn, um, all I have left is my gore. So we make a charge into his two Stegodons. Um, the only downside of this is my general is on the left of my unit. And my BSP is on the right. Now, in the in the ideal situation, <clears throat> excuse me, I would have had these two guys switched because the Stegodon on the left only had one wound left. Well, the Stegodon on the right had all of his wounds left. So... My general swing in strength eight with four attacks right now, and I really would have rather he'd hit that Stegodon, but was not to be. So we come in, um, we kill the one Stegodon, and the other one survives with a couple of wounds or so on him. So, and here's the end of the game. So he didn't break on. He did lose combat, but he didn't break because he's leadership ten rerollable with cold-blooded, so, uh, that's that side, and there's that side, so, 
Uh, not sure why I had the book out, but you know. So, uh, conclusion, it was a pretty obvious uh, victory for the Lizardmen. Uh, Lizards got around 1543 from my army. Well, I only killed something like 629 points of his army. Uh, <clears throat> the skink cloud was probably sufficiently uh, good at uh, absorbing uh, all my guys, or at least keeping them busy enough. Um, yeah, so I guess just some just some thoughts on on the general game. Um, the stegodon charges into multi wound monsters is rough. That uh, <clears throat> that really is. Um, the impact hits alone are bad enough, but when they when they multiply, that's that's hard. Uh, <clears throat> losing my level four is also rough. Uh, I don't know. I got I got to think something else about that, but we'll see in the future. Um, so far, though, I have been pretty happy with the Harpies replacing the Razor Gore. Uh, the fact that the Harpies have actually killed something for me is uh, substantially better than the Razor Gore. Uh, normally, my Razor Gore just uh, run up and die. Um, but in the meta I play in, so many everybody has shooting. And yeah, sure, their toughness 5, but you only need 3 6s to kill them. It's not, it's not that hard. So I play a lot of elves, um, stuff like that, dwarves, lizardmen. They just weren't very good. But the um, harpies have have done a pretty good job of, of at least at least getting somewhere and maybe doing something. So and they're equivocal points. So yeah, it's fine. Um, under the notes, I'm going to a my first GT uh, June fifth in Omaha. Um, it's a bug, bug Eater GT, I think it's called. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I'm almost done painting. I think the list you saw tonight is the list I'm going to take. So I just need to paint those last five Harpies, and I'll be good to go. So that's good. Uh, otherwise, all my basing is done. Uh, I need to get a... Probably do some work for a display board, but we'll see. Um, my wife and I are attending the same GT uh, for the team tournament, because there's a team tournament the day before, and we're going to have a display board for that. So I might just hijack that. And say, oh, look, now there's Beastmen on it. Cool. Anyway. Uh, and the other thoughts, too. I, I really kind of wish I had, um, <laughs> instead of painting all those Minotaurs, I've like, spent the time to paint straight up Ungors. Um, <clears throat> I, know, I know having Ungors to caddy around Doom Bowls isn't quite as useful. Uh, because you, you fail, you don't get the lookout, sir, and stuff like that, but... I don't know. It would it would be so much less points to cart, to cart them around. Those, those minotaurs are just so expensive. Like thirty ungor is just nothing. It's like one hundred and fifty points or something like that. I don't know. It, it, they're really cheap as opposed to those those six minotaur are like uh, three hundred fifty points or something. I don't know. It yeah. anyway. It's it's still it's still a fun game. Um, it was bloody and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed getting. You need to run around, so um, I'll probably stop rambling here. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, I'll try to get more battle reports up, or at least some hobby updates. It's just been a uh, been a bit in and out. So thanks, and thanks for watching, and have a good day.